Hi everyone, I'm Karen Combs and welcome to Floss Tube 24. It is November 29th and it's been about three weeks since I've been with you. I've got a lot of things to share, a couple of finishes, uh, a couple new starts, what I've been working on, just all kinds of things. So thank you for joining me. If you're a new viewer, this is my channel or my playlist for Floss Tube, all things stitching. We also have a playlist for quilting tips and some of my quilt designs, and you can click on the different playlists to see those. But this is my Floss Tube. And for those of you that are subscribers that are rejoining, thank you for coming back. I love seeing your comments. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I've been messing around trying to get set up this morning. I was organizing yesterday, getting things prepped, and then this morning just I can't seem to get everything just right, so we're just going to wing it. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I might kind of be all over the place, and it might be something you don't even notice. We'll see how it goes. So I wanted to mention a few comments that I got. I don't know if there's any questions questions, more comments that were excellent, so I wanted to address some of those. Had a lot of comments on the kit parade that I did last time, which I don't remember who called it that, and maybe I called it that, I don't remember. But I thought kit parade, that's a perfect description for that. And believe it or not, that's not all I have. That's just what I showed. But we'll do another one, maybe do a floss tube extra at some point and do some more, or I may just add them in. But thank you for all your comments. It was fun for me to go through some things and it's like, hmm, I need to start these. And I actually did start one of them I showed. And Barbara mentioned the kit parade and I wanna read her quote, because I think it's, perfect and I think about this. Barbara, thank you for mentioning this. She said she pulls out her kitted projects every few weeks or so just to remind herself of the joy headed her way. I love that. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing that. The joy that's headed our way when we look at our kitted projects. Perfect, perfect description. I had several people, Sheila, Anne, and Julia to mention them, they mentioned about writing the count on the salvage of their linen. I think I had mentioned that I should start doing that. They do, and I think that's an excellent idea. And they use, and this is actually something I've used when we would sign quilt blocks. This, uh, where's my camera? There it is. Oh, my camera's backwards this time, okay. So this is a micro pen. Let's see if I can get it. So I'll put a link to that. They don't smudge. And let's see, it's a Pigma 01 Micro. And it's waterproof and it's fade proof and it doesn't smudge. Where is my, I'm trying to read this without my glasses. I'm just, there we go. So let me see, I've got my camera flipped around. Maybe that's the problem. I usually have it over here, the camera, and it's this way. So let me see if I can. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> I should restart it, but I'm not going to. So that pen, if you want to write on your salvage, is an excellent one to do that. So that was a wonderful suggestion. And Hedro Stitching mentioned something that I actually forgot about. I think I was talking about Dorcas Haynes and some of the stitches I needed to look up and I mentioned looking up in books. And Hedro Stitching mentioned the Royal School of Needlework has a stitch bank that will show you how to do stitches. And I had forgotten about that. So thank you for that. And I will put a link to that in the description box as well. So those were all excellent comments. And Anne mentioned something when I was talking about Dorcas Haynes. I think I mentioned that I was going to keep on working and go back to a section when my skills improved. And that's what I found. And then I mentioned that to quilters as well in my quilt class. And Anne mentioned that, that she really appreciated that comment. And I think sometimes 
we forget as we work on things and whether it's quilting, crafts, anything, and we get further along and we get more practice and we try different things, our skills improve and we don't even know that. So she was appreciative of that and it's something we don't even realize, but it is happening. All right, so I'm just going to look here and I had mentioned last time the Antique Needlework Pattern Library and Sarah spent a lot of time in it and she found some ads for the Duchess and Princess Hoops from, did I write, how long, 1920s ad, and they were, hang on, 20 cents. Can you believe it? She said, oh, to go back in time, I know, right? Go back and purchase all those things when they were 20 cents. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So I appreciate all those different comments, and I have... And I apologize for my phone ringing. I have the ringer turned off, but you might end up hearing that from another room. I had a couple comments about, okay, see, I'm already discombobulated here. There's the problem. All right. Oh, and of course, now it goes out of my reach. I had a mention about Oh Joyous Day and that it was one of my projects in the kit parade that I hadn't started yet. And I wondered why I hadn't started it because I have the linen, I have all of the flosses. And I said, I think it's because there are some satin stitches. Uh, yep, it's gonna be backwards um, for me anyway. Some satin stitches at the top that they're not hard. They're just, and I don't even know if tedious is the word. They just take a little longer. And Mary mentioned that she did not do the satin stitch up here. She did X's and it worked great. So I thought that was a great suggestion to pass along. Let me set this down. And had a lot of consensus on, just had it. Here it is, no, that's not it, yes it is. Okay, I told you, <laughs> got the camera backwards. That's gonna be a challenge for me because I'm so used to being one way and it's the other. Had a lot of comments on come into my garden, which I had kitted. I see, I need to look, there we go. And I had kitted it with Lollybrook, but I had just received from traditional stitches Lentil, is it vintage? Lakeside linen, vintage lentil. And I thought that would be perfect and had a lot of comments that people agreed. So actually here's the, actually put them on a ring for you. Here's all the flosses. Haven't started this one yet, but I agree. I think the Vintage Lentil by Lakeside would be gorgeous. So that's all kitted in there now. So I appreciate your comments on that as well. All right, let me just check. One more. And Brick House Stitching mentioned, let me get it. And I apologize for the crinkling I try to keep it at a minimum, but there's just nothing I can do. The camera and the microphone are all in the same place. And I try to keep it to a minimum, but it's just life. So uh, I apologize for that. Brickhouse mentioned the Christmas at Holly House that I showed by Scarlet House, which I love this. All right, let me peek around. Yes, you can see that. The linen used is 40 count camouflage by Stitches and Spice, which is no longer being made. So I thought, okay, uh, what could I use? So I went through some of my linen that I just reorganized all my linen and I did take it all out of the plastic bags. And what I did is I put, I got some of these little, let's see if I can show you, some of these little uh, bulb, safety pins. Let's see, can you see that? Oh, that's 
going to be a problem. Boy, I am all over the place. I'm, I'm going to stop apologizing. I'm just going to apologize for everything. So you can see that little bulb uh, safety pin, and I just clipped whatever information I had on it. And I had read about not putting your linen and plastic bags over time. It could cause a problem, so I just decided to reorganize. But going back, I organized, took everything out of the plastic bags. But going back to the camouflage linen that's no longer available, I found two linens that I had that I think will be very close. One is needle and flax all cut. Let me hold that up so you can see it. It's very close. There we go. So I think that is a good option. And the other one, and these are just some I have. I'm sure there's many others. And I got this pattern at the attic. So you could even call them and I'm sure they would have a good suggestion. This is Fiber on a Whim Latte. And it's a little lighter, but I think that's another good option. Now I'm going to put the two linens side by side so you can see them. So you can see one's a little more yellow. Well, not even yellow, just a little lighter. All right, so uh, this is all cut, this is latte. I don't know the color is coming across. If I hold it back, it might be a little better. Might be a little better, yeah, let me try that. Somehow getting it closer, it really darkened and it wasn't true, that's better. So I think those two linens are an option and I'm gonna make a note of that because I'm not gonna kit this up yet. Let me look and see what, it uses MPI and there's also conversions for DMC. So before I make a decision, I will pull those DMCs and put them on the, the linen. But just to show you the color difference, this is Vintage Country Mocha. So you can see, there we go. See that these are a little, green is not really the word. There's just a little cast of maybe a golden color. So anyway, I thought those options would work for the camouflage that is no longer available. Let me, I'm going to use that country mocha in a little bit to show you. So those, I think, are all the comments that I had. I wanted to mention a floss, two floss tubes that are older that I watched that were excellent. Um, I had seen somebody on Facebook mention that there was a pressing video by Pat Ryan. And Pat Ryan is one of the R's in R&R &R Reproduction Linens and also owns Dying to Stitch. So, and so Dying to Stitch and R&R &R Linen are one in the same. Dying to Stitch is the shop. But Pat Ryan had a pressing video, so I did a search for it, and it is on Donna Ray's Flannel Jammies Farm Floss Tube. And I don't think there's been a new one for a while, but, and this, this video is about five years old, but it was an excellent video about pressing linen. And this is from Pat, who's an expert, because she has dyed probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of yards of linen over all the years she's been doing this. So I'll put a link to that. And then Pat also, had another video with Donna Ray. So Donna Ray interviewed Pat about samplers. And it was so chock full of information. I watched it and immediately watched it again. And I'm going to watch it again. Just everything that Pat was talking about, it's like, this is fantastic. So I want to share, wanted to share those with you and I'll put those links in the description. So, so many of the things I talk about, I do link so you can just, instead of trying to find it, it's right there. I also just watched 
Grace at Paisley Stitcher, and I just love her videos. If you have not seen her latest floss tube, she's talking about the German samplers, and it's just, that was another one I watched, and then I pulled out pen and notepad and rewatched and took notes. It was fantastic. I mean, there's just so many wonderful floss tubes that I wanted to mention those specifically because I've just watched them and did not want to forget to mention it. All right, so let's look at, I have a couple of finishes. Now, this isn't a full finish, but this is a finish. I'm going to move this pen. This is a finish of a row. So this is the Laura Standish sampler that I've been working on. So, it's a long one. So what I did is I finished, I'm up in here and I finished, I think the fifth row, which it had been languishing for a little bit. So I did just knuckle down, buckle down, knuckle down. <laughs> I think it's buckle down and finish that row. Let me stand up. So the colors I'm using are a silk pack from Vicki Clayton Silks. So right in here, I finished that one. Yeah, this is a challenge using the camera the other way. I did not think it'd be such an issue. So I did finish that and here is, I'll try to lay this down so it doesn't get crushed. Here's the silks, and I do have them in this bobbin case, which I did talk about this a few floss tubes ago, and I'll put a link to that. All right, there we go. It holds them in perfectly. At first, I thought they'd be too tight, but it really is perfect. And then you can just close it up, and if you're traveling... Now just close it up and click it shut and take it with you. I think there were two of them for nine or ten dollars and they're all that foam insert so perfect. So I did finish that and I did have a finish on the drawn thread stars. Let me hold it back so you can see the whole thing and then go up close. All I had left to do were the leaves and the specialty stitches. So again, I buckled down, <laughs> knuckled down, buckled down, and finished. So here it is. Yeah, there we go. I just love how this looks. This is on Stormy Night. And... I didn't look up the count. I think it's 36. And I used the called for dinky dies. Or is it 32? It surprised me. I thought I'd have to use two scan uh, string. I'm looking here. 32 count Stormy Night Lugana. And used the dinky dies. And only had to use one strand. I thought 32, ooh, I'd have to use two. But I didn't. So that's Dinky Dye Silk. So that's one finish, and I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna have it framed. So that's got a, I've got several things. So that will go to get framed next year sometime. And the other finish I had, and I'm just gonna flash it because I don't want to show it too much. I'm going to be going to the Great British Sampler Weekend at Hobby House next October. And Nicola has sent the participants a sampler, actually two samplers, to work on ahead of time. But we have to pick the count and the color. So I'm not going to give details on this until later, but I do want to show it to you. Um, I, I'll tell you what Lynn and I used. I used 46 count baby sheep, and then I used some Belle Swath silk. So I'm just going to put it up there real quick. But I love this Belle Swath silk. It's cranberry is the red. 
There it is. I love how that looks. So I did finish that and I'll probably get that framed or frame it. So those are, well, finished a row and finished two. And remember I told you that my friend Lena said she will start one for every two she finishes. Well, I started two <laughs> for what I finished, but let me show you what I've worked on. Let's see, I've got some haul to show you too, but we'll do this first. I met with my stitch group last, oh, a couple weeks ago, and I did work on Live on Little a little more. I got the grass done, I got some of the beach done, got some part of the house, the front done. There we go. So I will work on this some more. It's a good uh, sit and stitch when I'm chatting. So I've got to do the bottom. I've got to do the rest of the house and the border. So I'm going to be doing a lot of, I'm going to be gone quite a bit in January. So I'm going to take that with me and hopefully I'll get to work on it. So I worked on that. That's a new start. That's a new start. I have two new starts, but first I'm going to show you one of the whips I pulled out. No, I'm going to show you the new starts first, because there's a reason why then I went back to the whip. So in the kit parade, I showed you Stitcher's Sampler. And Maggie is working on this too. So here it is. And the linen that it's called for, this is by Primitive Hair, the linen it called for was, why does that not say it? I think it was a 32 count and I changed it. And what I'm doing is looking in my book of days because I wrote it all down. Yes, it I think it was a 36 count, 32 count, and I changed it. It's Old Massachusetts, and I'm using a 40 count. And this is also by the Primitive Hair. And it uses Garden Gate. So I did change the linen size. I had ordered, I think it's 32 count that it came with, but I changed it. And I worked on this quite a bit. And here's the linen, which what a gorgeous piece of linen this is. And here it is. Oh, I just love how the garden gate looks against that linen. Let me show you the picture again. Very primitive looking. So I worked on that, started it, and let's see, got, got the top almost done. I think I have two more bees to do. Got some of the words done. And then I also worked on, and I can't show you the chart, I worked on the second sampler that Nicholas sent us. And I thought, I am not buying floss for this. I have a lot of floss, and I had fi just finished the stars, which you saw, and here are the silks that I still have left. And then I have all of these silks from my Quaker dwelling. And I thought, I am going to select from all these different silks that I already have. And some of them, there's, well, it'll, it'll finish them up. So I am working on it. We just got the chart. We did not get where to put anything. So I'm just gonna flash it real quick. I got a hanging thread here. All right, so I am using those colors and 
that's what I'm working on so far. That probably wasn't very, wasn't quick enough, was it? So the, some of the colors I'm using right now, and I'm using it on um, Espresso by R&R. &R. Those are some of the colors I pulled to work on. Not all of them, I think that one too. No, it's this one. So those are the colors, and I have all of these other colors I haven't used yet, and I may not use all of them, but you can see I've got quite a few to choose from. So I did get all of the border done on that. I'm working on the words, get the alphabet done. I'm not quite sure why to get them done ahead, but I will. So those were the uh, whips I've been working on. Nope, got one more. And this starts. So the Stitcher Sampler was a single color. And I worked on that quite a bit. And then I worked on the sampler I just showed you. And usually I can work on something for several days. And I think I did it almost a week. Let me look at my notes here. This is the other thing I like to use my book of days for is write what I'm working on um, for how long. I alternated between the um, sampler that Nicola gave us and the Stitcher sampler for about a week. Actually about, no, almost two weeks, week and a half or so, alternating between the two. And then I started getting a little tired of, I think, of the colors. This is what happens also when I would be teaching classes, quilting classes. And I found it with myself too. Have you ever been in a class? And if you're a quilter, you know what I'm talking about. You'll be in a class, you'll be working, you have your project, you have your colors, you're working on it, you're working on it. And the day goes on, everybody's looks better than yours. And it's because our eyes get fatigued looking at the same color over and over again. And that's when you look around and go, yeah, there's better, that's better. And maybe we do the same thing when we look at Instagram. You know, we've been working on one thing for quite a while. And then we look at Instagram and say, that's better, that's better. It's because our eyes get tired and sometimes we need to switch things up. So as I was working on... Oh, that border that I just showed you. I wanted to finish it, which I did, and then I thought, I can work on the words, but I'm just kind of tired of that brown color. So let me pull something else out to work on. And so I pulled out something that's got lots of color, and I haven't worked on this since May. It is Sarah Milthrop, which we got at Sampler Symposium, and this should be coming out maybe in January, I think Nicola mentioned it was coming out in January, but but it's it will be coming out. And this sampler, look at the colors. I am using, I think this is on creme brulee, but I decided to use 46 count Thornfield and I'm using 103 silks. Now, do you remember the little uh, drawers little chest of drawers that I showed that I got at an antique mall a couple weeks ago, well, a couple floss tubes ago. I have the silks for Sarah in here. And so I just pulled the silks and I'm just, it's just so pretty. So there are the silks and I had the top part done and I added some more of the little Florida leaves in the border and now I'm going down, working further down. Look at how, this is such an elegant sampler. The colors, oh, they just go up. It's a lot of color changes in that border. So I'll work on it a little bit and then I'll move to something else. Look at, look at that motif and that house. Oh, so pretty. So I worked on the border a little bit and then I came down here and worked on that motif and I'm just starting the berry basket. 
So I'll probably work on this. Well, till my eyes get fatigued with the colors or I want to change and do something else. But it, this is, I don't know. There's just something about it. It is just so pretty. I know I have to finish most of this motif up here too. So pretty. So I worked on that quite a bit, actually, you see. About four days now I've worked on that. And so talking about the Book of Days, this is my October, and then I have my November somewhat stickered up. But I did get, I to show you this, so we'll kind of go into haul now. I did order the book of days for next year and I took it to Office Max, Office Depot, whatever office thing we have. Had them put a comb binding on it and a cover, so it came with a back cover, and I had them add about four or five sheets in the back. So all of that was about $4 to do. But I wanted to show you what I added. I did go to Hobby Lobby and got some stickers. So I did put my name in there and started, started stickering. Now let me go to the ones I added. And I'll add some more stickers as we go along. But I did add a page for starts. And then I found that sticker right there, time for a new start, time for a fresh start. Thought that was perfect. So I added a starts page. And then here's the back of that. And then I added a whips page. So I took the whips I had in my other book of days and moved them forward. So I have three whips from 2022. And then I have all of these. That's a lot. <laughs> all of those added in there. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it's a dozen. It's well, it's 13, it's 15 if you add all, but it's a dozen from last year. And I was counting, I think I had eight finishes last, or for this year so far. Uh, let's see, and then what else did I add? I think those are the pages, and I just have a couple extras for whatever I might add in there. And I did put a lot of different stickers on the back cover. So I'm got that ready. And then one of the gals in our uh, stitch group that we all have met over the last, oh, since about May, some that I met in Clarksville at the Homespun Gathering with Nicola. Some of them I met at Hobby House this fall. So one of the gals, I think it was Cindy, showed us this cross-stitch, cross-stitchers planner by My Crazy Life. I went ahead and ordered that because it's got some different things in it. So I'm trying to decide. I'll probably use Book of Days and I might supplement with this. It does have the calendar and it, uh, let me show this without, how can I do this? Okay, it has some charts in it, which are nice, but what's really, different and nice and I'm trying to think I might even combine my books I haven't decided what to do yet it does have a place for planning for next year which the book of days does as well and it does have whips and plans and new starts and it has retreats look at the pages it has so under retreats, it's got where you can put information. So if you want information about your uh, hotel or the confirmation or the address, it has that week, to-do lists, notes, whatever you need to plan for, wish list, and say there's going to be vendors there, your wish list, um, pre-orders, and sometimes there are pre-orders that you can do, packing, 
So if you need to keep track of certain things you don't want to forget. And this is all under the retreat. Uh, in the neighborhood, so if someone tells you about a restaurant or an antique mall, you can write it down so you don't forget. And I love this, table friends. You can put names, contact information, and look at this, stitchy kindness. So if someone gave you a, a gift you want to remember, small exchange, really nice. And then there's some graph paper. So there's a spot for, I think, two separate retreats, maybe three. Yeah, there's three. Yeah. So I just thought that was excellent. So I'm trying to think now how to combine them because I, I like both of them. So this is my crazy life. She's on Etsy and the cross stitchers planner. And then I did order from her these stickers. These are so cute. This one says uh, Whipgo New Start FFO. So good, Sal. This one is Coffee Please, Sampler September, Year of Whips, Marching Orders. You see that? And then love this with the tea and the coffee. So I did order some of those stickers too. So those are on her Etsy page and I'm going to make a link for that for you too. All right, so I'll show the planners. Get a little bit of haul, and I think what I'll do is show you, uh, I have a separate video to show you of an unboxing, yay, and then I'll, while you're watching that, I will kind of retool to show you a little bit of haul. But the, you've all seen my mini Potoki stand, which, oh, I need to undo that. This, you can lift up, uh, tighten, this expands so you can have it wide for a Q-snap or um, I think even a small scroll stand would fit in it or it can be very tight if you have a smaller hoop. But what I like about it is it folds right up. Look. So I use this all the time. It's great to travel with. And Hobby House, and I just checked this morning, had some that you could order. Most of the time they're sold out. Now this is November 29th, so they may be gone by the time I uh, upload this. But what I did, and this is the light walnut, is you can put your email address in um, the order page at Hobby House and it just says notify me when it's back in stock. And that's what I did. And I just took whatever I could get. And I do like this color. It's light walnut, but there was another color I really wanted. So what I did is I ordered it from the Potos Potoki website and I ordered it at the end of May, beginning of June. And I knew it would take a while, but I did get it. And this is the process. And then I'll show you the unboxing. I ordered it at the end of May and then I got an email right away saying basically you're in the queue to get uh, the next one that's ready in the color of your choice that you ordered and that you were not charged until it's ready to ship. So I heard from them. I knew it would take probably all summer. I heard from them in September that I my um, stand was being made and that they would be sending me an invoice that I could pay. And then once it was ready to go, tracking number. So that was, mm, I think the middle of September, by the end of September, got the invoice, paid it. And then uh, they said it would be shipping in October. And as soon as it was ready to ship, we got a tracking number. And I think it took two weeks to get to me. So I knew it would take a while, but I did get it. It was beautifully packaged came perfect condition. So I'm going to stop here. Um, oh, in the color, I'm, in the video, I couldn't remember the color. It's gray. I thought it was a gray green, but I ordered gray. And I'm going to stop here. 
show you the unboxing so you can see how it's all packaged and whether you get it right from the factory or you get it from Hobby House. I've ordered from both and the packaging is the same, beautifully done. So I'm gonna play that video and then we'll come back and take a look at some of my haul. Well, let's see if we can get this to work. I'm going to unbox my new Potoski mini stand. This is the one you've seen me use, but I ordered a new one directly from the factory. I ordered it, let's see, this is November. I ordered it this summer. I think it took four or five months to get to me, but it's in perfect condition. I was able to get a color that's hard to get normally. So I thought you'd like to see it. It came boxed that was all wrapped. And then inside, there's an inner box that you pull out. And I've already opened it. So it's not going to be as beautifully packaged, but I still wanted to show you how well it was packaged then. Let's see. There we go. It's going to come all wrapped. This, couldn't remember exactly how it was uh, fit in here, but this protects it, keeps it from sliding. And then this bag was neatly tied like I said, I've opened it already. So this bag that it comes in is perfect for a travel bag. So if I'm traveling somewhere, I can put my stand right in this uh, bag and it will protect it. Now the color I got is kind of a green gray. You can see here. This is the mini. And when you open it up, there's a protective piece here that you could use in here between your frame if you would like, but it just goes off and you can put it right back on. And what I do love about this is no matter where you position it, it will hold. You can loosen it up to move it around and then tighten it to wherever you want. You can see it folds very flat. And then this is where the hoop or the frame will go. It's very wide. So it'll fit a Q-snap. I, I haven't used it with a scroll frame, but it probably would fit a scroll frame. And it can get um, all the way up to a very narrow frame. It's very sturdy. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but I've traveled with it, and it's a good size to travel with, so I just thought you would like to see that unboxing of my new Potoki Mini frame, and I believe this is the light green gray. I'll look that up and mention that exactly. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and here it is. I said green, it's gray, but it's got just a cast of green to it and it's painted rather than stained. So I had wanted this color and I love the light walnut, but I thought, well, I'm gonna get the one I originally wanted and here it is. So I'm anxious to use that and I'll store it or when I travel, I'll use the bag for it. So I know some of you may have wanted to order from the factory and wasn't sure how long it would take, so I wanted to mention the procedure. So I've got a little bit of haul and I switched the camera around. So let me see if I'm less um, fumble fingers with it. This is a new color linen to me. This is Sleeping Bear by Needle and Flax. And I just messaged Rachel and said, I love this color. I got 40 count. Oh, it's just like the perfect light tan. Oh, it's just, it's beautiful. And I'm going to hold it up next to Vintage Country Mocha so you can see 
just a little bit more brown, very soft. It's just like the perfect sampler color. I love it. So I'm gonna be ordering more of that because it's just a perfect color. So I did get that. And Rachel's been doing some pre-orders. So if you follow her on Instagram, when she's going to be dyeing a color, you can pre-order and then you'll know for sure you get it rather than hoping to catch it when it's on the website. So if you haven't followed Rachel at the Needle and Flax, her Instagram page, let me write that down. I'll also put that in the links. That way, if you want to order certain colors, she will mention when she's when you can pre-order it. I'm gonna write that down. Do a link. Then I did get just a couple things that I belong to. A couple of clubs, just a couple. This is the Dying to Stitch Club. I can't remember which one this is, but Sampler Club. But this is the newest one. This is A Visit from St. Nick, and this is a collaboration with Hello from Liz Matthews and Kathy Barrick. Isn't that cute? And it's got the linen. It's got the flosses. Yeah, see if I can. It's got some full skeins. It's got what you need. You can see. It's got some full skeins. It's got some of the partials that you'll need. Let's see what what is it on. It's on 36 count winter brew. That's going to be so pretty. So I saw that posted. I think Dying to Stitch posted it either on their Facebook or Instagram or maybe both. And I was so excited that I was in that club because when I saw that, I thought, oh, it is so cute. So that just came. And then I'm also in the Scattered Seed Pin Keep Club. And that came. This is Sweeter Than Honey Pin, pin Keep. And her presentation and packaging is just gorgeous. So that also came in the last, since, since I talked to you last. And then I just have a couple more things that I got. Sylvia from Running With Needles and Scissors. She did a release of Sarah Rickman and on her birthday, just for her birthday, for people that were in her newsletter, and that's how you found out about it, she did, she, she gave us a gift on her birthday. You could download the chart. So I did download that. I can't wait to start that. This is so pretty. It's got the vase, it's got a tree, it's got a couple little dogs, it's got some berry baskets, and it is, using the Vicki Clayton silk. So I ordered the silk pack. I haven't pulled any linen for it yet, but here's the colors. Let's see, maybe I can. Vicki's got the silk pack all set that you can purchase. So I did get that and tuck these into, um, well, I've got the information sheet in there, but I'm going to tuck that in here so it's all together. So I got that, and thank you to Sylvia. That was really, really nice that she did that for us. Then Hobby House, they must have had this for a class, and they had some left over. This is Stacy Nash as the Crow Flies Pin Keep, and they posted on their Instagram they had a few kits left. So I immediately ordered it because I just loved this. Look at that. The house, the bird, carrying acorns and keys. And look at how the kit was packaged. It's in this zippered bag with the Hobby House logo. And here is the, um, get the finishing ribbon. You've got Hold up the, look at the colors. It got 
the floss and the linens in there. I think there might even be a needle. I need to be careful when I open this. Make sure, oh, this is pretty. Let me hold up the floss to it. Look at that. So I'm sure they'll have, I'm sure that the pattern or the chart will be available at some point. This It was the Primitive Needle Art Primer class that they did. So there it is. And does it say, the linen is Dames of the Needle Cosmic Platinum 35 count, and then it's weeks. So I did order that. I just happened to be online at the right time and and saw it and immediately ordered one. And then the one other thing that I got, this I might have shown you before. I kitted this up when I was at the attic. A Lady's Needle M Woods 1759. And it is a, a I believe I have this right, it's a Norfolk sampler. Do I have that right? I don't have the linen for it, but I did get the silks. So it's all ready. Thinking of doing it on a really high count. These, the original was tiny. It was like this. I think in my floss tube visit to the attic back in January, I showed um, the original hanging up at the attic. But I was talking to my friend Lori about this, and she mentioned that she purchased one of the, I think I have this right, the Norfolk sampler that's similar to M. Woods. It was also at the attic. This is Sarah Clark, 1789. And when I went to look at this, I fell in love with it. I ordered the PDF so I could download it. So here it is. Look at how beautiful that is. Here's the cover model. It just, each one of those lozenges had a different design in it. It's just beautiful. So I ordered that um, and that's available as a PDF. I'll put the link to that. And I did order the silk pack for that, the Vicki Clayton silk pack. Benji's standing by me. Just a minute, buddy, I'll take you out. There it is. So I haven't pulled the linen for it. I'm wondering whether to do it on 46 or even higher. I don't know. The original, Benji, just a second, buddy. Original is done on a higher count. Um, original is done on 56, but they did theirs on 40. So I'm, I'm just trying to decide what to do, but I just, I put that in my order later and finally ordered it and then got the silk pack. So that's what my haul is. And Benji, come here, come here. Hey, no, he's by the door. So I'm going to go. I will be back in a um, couple of weeks, and then I won't be doing a floss tube in January, I don't think. Never know. I might. But thank you for joining me. I hope that um, you've enjoyed this. I always love reading your comments, and I think I have a little dog that needs to go out right now. So until next time, happy stitching, everyone.